Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 19, and we're going to cover section 1 of chapter 5, which is basic probability. That's all we're going to do in this uh, chapter for this course. Last time, we talked about our uh, least squares criterion, how to plot the least squares line and calculate the slope and intercept and, and how to interpret those uh, slopes and intercepts. And we also talked about how to use it for the least squares line or the regression line for prediction. And we talked about the coefficient of determination, which uh, told us how much of the variation in our y values are explained by our model or by our regression line. So in this video, we're going to talk about basic probability. We're going to talk about the concept of probability, what it means, and a general how to think about it. We're going to give some definitions. We're going to talk about the law of large, large numbers. We're going to define sample spaces, events, simple events, and talk about the complement rule. These are all things that are going to become very important uh, in our understanding of Chapter 7, which is where we're going next. So, the objectives for this video are, I want you to be able to understand that concept of, of probability, how to make simple uh, probability calculations, and calculate simple probabilities, how to understand uh, the law of large numbers, what it means in general terms, and then uh, how to use the complement rule, which we will be using in, from here on out. So it's a very important property or rule or law. <laughs> so probability, what is it? It's a number between 0 and 1, and it tells us how likely an event or something is to occur. How likely is that something occurs? So how likely is that? That's the idea behind probability. Now probabilities that are closer to 1 are more likely to occur. Closer to 0, less likely to occur. It's important to know the probability function. We're going to be using this, like I said, the rest of the semester. It'll have a different form, but it'll be basically the same thing. The probability function. The probability of some event a is the so we read this as the probability that event a will occur that's how we that's how we say this the probability of a and that's this is what it means so we say the probability of a and it means the probability that some event a will occur now if the probability is equal to 1 then it means that event a is certain to occur it will occur and I forgot to finish what I was writing here. If probability of A is zero, that means event A will not occur. Okay, It's impossible for event A to occur is another way to think about that. So now I'm going to uh, use a simple example to try to give you an idea of this definition of probability. It's a classic definition based on equally likely outcomes. Outcomes from what? something we call a statistical experiment. So I'll jump down to statistical experiment or observation. It can be thought of as a random activity, something where we don't know the outcome until it actually occurs. We could flip a coin. We know the possible outcomes are heads or tails, but we don't know which one will occur until we flip that coin. Same thing with tossing a die. Same thing with making a manufactured product. We don't know the exact size of the product until it occurs. There's variation in there. Event. It's a collection of one or more outcomes from that statistical experiment. It's a subset of the outcomes. Okay. A simple event is just one particular outcome of a statistical experiment. And a sample space are all the possible simple events for a statistical experiment. So here we have rolling a fair die. S, the sample space, is going to be the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those are the, all the possible values for a fair six-sided die. And then I could define event B as 1, 2, 3, 4, and event C as 5 and 6. So these are subsets or part of S. It could be only one value. B could be just one, let's say. Or B could be one, two, three, four, five, and six. It could be the whole set of S. So these events are one or more elements of S. 
that's an event. Okay, so let's go back to this definition for using probability. So P of A, the probability that A will occur, some event or subset of the sample space, is the number of different ways that A can occur. And we divide by that, that by the total number of different outcomes or the number of um, items or outcomes in our sample space. Number of outcomes in sample space S. So as we said before, rolling a fair die, let's say that A is an even number, 2, 4, 6. And of course, S is 1 through 6. So P of A would be how many ways can A occur? Well, there's three different ways A could occur. If I roll that die, I could get a 2, a 4, or a 6, and that would be that event A occurred. So I take 3 divided by 6, the total number of items in the sample space. I can reduce that to a half or 0.5, which is 50%. Okay? Now that's the classic definition of probability for equally likely outcomes. Then we talk about the relative frequency definition of, of probability. This is where we want to estimate probability. Up here, we're talking about real probability. This is the probability. Here we're talking, we don't know what it is, but we perform an experiment or we uh, collect some data and we're going to estimate the probability using the relative frequency, F divided by N, where F is the number of times that event A did occur in our data. Okay, So out of N samples, or N number of times we repeat an experiment, uh, a, F is the number of times that A actually occurred. And so this ratio will give us an estimate of the probability. So a survey of 20 randomly selected students revealed that 8 were freshmen. So let's let A be that the student's a freshman. S, if it's undergraduate, which is what I'm talking about, uh, S includes freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. There are four items in S. There's one item in A. Um, but... We can't say that these are equally likely. We, we took a survey and we measured it. What did we get? We got 8 out of 20 were freshmen. That's 40%, 0 0.4 or 40%. So now, is this the truth? Well, we're hoping it's close to the truth. That's why I put this approximately sign here. That's what the uh, squiggly equal sign is, is approximately. I'm saying we're estimating this probability as approximately 0.4, okay? So how close is it? Well, we don't actually know, but um, we can use the law of large numbers to help us here. As our sample size increases, the relative frequency gets closer and closer to the actual probability of A, okay? So... I hope that helps explain uh, what probability means. One last thing in this video, and that is the complement of an event. If A is an event, so here I've drawn out uh, what we call a Venn diagram, and this outside uh, rectangle, we're going to say that's the sample space S. And A is some event inside of S. Everything that's not inside of A is A complement. That's how we can write it. And so A complement and A, if we put them together, together they make up S. So if, if, I'm in, if I have an element that's in A, it cannot be in A complement. Likewise, if an element is in A complement, it cannot be in A. So by element, I mean maybe a, an outcome. So the probability of the sample space is going to be 1. So I had this um, uh, example up here where we talked about rolling the fair die. If you remember, I made B, 1, 2, 3, 4, C, 5, and 6. Now the probability of B, there's four numbers in B, there's four outcomes, and there's six total in S. So the probability of B is 4 over 6, and the probability of C is 2 out of 6, or 2 over 6. And B is twice as likely to occur as C, because B is 4, 6, C is 2, 6, which is half of that. The probability of S 
If we use the equally likely, we take the number of items in S, which is 6, divide by the total number of items in the sample space, which happens to be S, and so that's 1. The probability of the sample space is always 1. And so the probability of A plus the probability of A complement, together those make up S, and they don't overlap. So the probabilities of, the, of A and A complement had better add to 1. And so this is our complement rule, that the probability of A complement is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. Likewise, the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of A complement. Okay? So from this die example above, the probability of B complement is 1 minus the probability of B, which is 1 minus 4 6, which actually uh, equals 2 6. Okay. Well, I hope that helps you with some basic probability. So if you need to, watch this video again, read that section of the book, try to make sure that you understand this basic concept well, because it is important. Remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. The notes are, need to be neat for you, so you can use them for your tests and homework. Uh, update your formula sheet with these formulas we've gone over today, and we will see you next time.